text my broker. Keep going. <laughs> I was thinking we were just going to edit this part out. Yeah, probably so. Chad's going to be like, are y'all kidding me? Hey, it's Heather with the Pair of Spades podcast. And again, I have joining me special guest star Shay. Hello. How are y'all doing? We are excited to bring you our show today. We're going to be talking about the Delphi murders. Yes. We like true crime. True crime mm-hmm. is interesting. And but first, but first, we're going to talk about what's new in the news today, which is pretty great news. <laughs> in San Francisco, <laughs> they have approved um, killer police robots. Wonderful. I'm, I don't see anything wrong with that. No. Do it's you? Like, no. It's not like the previous governor of California had any issues with them or anything. Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I mean, Will Smith, Arnold Schwarzenegger, what do you guys think about this? Because I think you have some experience, at least with CGI. Yeah. <laughs> so here's a quote that I think was interesting. Um, the police spokesperson, this is from Sienna, and the police spokesperson told the Washington Post The department has a fleet of robots. It doesn't plan to outfit them with firearms, but he said explosive charges could be added to the robots to breach fortified structures, or the robots could be deployed to contact, incapacitate, or disorient a dangerous suspect without risking the life of an officer. I just see so many lawsuits. (laughs) You think? I just, I don't know, honestly. How, How do they tell the robot who to incapacitate so if it's like a a domestic dispute and the husband or the wife or whatever whoever is Mm -hmm. the antagonist right Mm -hmm. how do they tell the robot only go in there and incapacitate this one yeah and leave everybody else alone well it's kind of like have you seen all the videos on this like the self-driving cars where they're wrecking or they're going to park and hitting someone it's there's just so much room for for error, I guess is the right way to put it. That's like maybe not with lives that we should, you know, because I do get like we were talking before we started about whenever they implemented the robots to go in and bomb cases. Yeah. And I see the benefits of AI technology in situations like that. So, for example, if it's like a hostage situation, something like that, I see where you can send something in with video footage to get a lay of the land, all that good stuff. I don't really understand giving the robot an explosive if the robot is uh if the robot let it has to go into a bank let's say mm-hmm. there's a bunch of bank robbers in there and they've got a uh-huh. whole bunch of suspects and the bank robbers have put chains around the front doors mm-hmm. the robots can use their explosives to blow the doors open and go in there and get the bank robbers and save everybody why couldn't people just because the the bank robbers would kill the people and you can't kill the robots i guess that's a good so it saves, it keeps the cops safe, mm-hmm. but allows them to break in and save everybody in there. I don't know, too. I'm even like, how many bank robberies are happening in California that they need hundreds of them? I mean, I don't know what constitutes a fleet. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would assume in my mind that's multiple, quite a few. Yeah, I would, I would assume what if that that yeah that that would be a lot. So you know that. That's, I think it's that's one of great. those things I'm where I, s- I could see the benefits of it, but when you're sitting here weighing pros and cons, it's kind of like maybe don't. I don't know. Let's. Why do they have to be sentient? Like, can we just, you know, program them? Mm-hmm. The the AI that scares me is the AI that keeps learning and keeps changing and keeps yeah. learning. I mean, hello, the freaking red pill, blue pill. What is that? Matrix? Yes. Oh, yeah. my gosh, dude. What? There's all these movies that say how, how this could go very wrong for humankind. <laughs> Why of, do we have to go down this road? Yeah, a bunch of metaphorical warnings. But Yes, we do not need to go down this road. So, you know, I see the good for it, but I also am really scared about mm. 200 years from now, what's going to come of these killer robots. I just... No, I think it's one of those cases where it's like maybe sometimes you just can't have your cake and eat it too. And this is one of those. Like it's dangerous being a police officer. I completely get that. I think we should use technology to our benefit, but maybe making it, like you said, a sentient being and strapping bombs to it, like there might just be asking for trouble. I mean, we both have Mm iRobots that doesn't work, do our vacuuming for us every day. It kind of works. But what if, because those are even 
those even have uh-huh. they AI. They learn your space. That's right. And, uh-huh. You can say, hey, go clean Connor's room right now. What if they decide to equip those little things with little teeny tiny guns so that yeah. if somebody breaks into your house, you could have your iRobot pretend like it's vacuuming and go up and be like, pew, pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a good thing. <laughs> All right, next up on the news, Elon Musk has confirmed what a lot of people already knew. Um, he's come out and said 100% Twitter has meddled in elections. This is from the Washington Times. So he's lending credence to what the critics are saying, that the social media platforms have immense power, enough power to control politics in the U.S. and around the world by influencing the vote. He hasn't specifically said, I mean, obviously all of our brains go back to 2020 Mm -hmm. when, you know, Hunter Biden's laptop came out right before that. And, you know, the government, the FBI specifically met with all of these social media platforms and said, hey, hey, watch out for Russian collusion and Russian disinformation. This is probably all not true when they full well knew that it was true. Yeah. Yeah. And they came out and said, suppress these stories, suppress these stories. And then, you know, we all know how that ended. So, you know. Now he's come out and said Twitter has failed in trust Mm -hmm. and safety for a long time and has interfered in elections. Twitter 2.0 will be a far more efficient, transparent, and even-handed. I mean, I think that's really important. I unfortunately don't think he's ever going to be given the credit of that because he's been pushed into too much of a corner since he's spoken out against the far left. Right. So since he's spoken out about the far left, he's automatically sensationalized as being far right i don't know i don't know where his politics fall i genuinely don't but to me and and i do understand like facebook and twitter they're privately traded companies so they have where not not twitter not anymore oh okay twitter twitter's not privately or traded anymore that's good i mean i don't think it's now privately owned Yeah. yeah i think something that has that much ability to influence especially when you know that they're going and they're making some things not visible others pushing it out to the public right. and unfortunately a lot of people don't think for themselves so if it's being pushed out that's the rhetoric that's going to go and it happens on both sides you know it happens on the far right it happens on the far left so 100 percent, absolutely absolutely so those are some oh oh and this this uh the last thing that i wanted to mention which really freaked me out so shad sent me a screenshot yesterday that he saw and I'm like, there's no way that's true. So a few days ago, Shad and I did um, a Balenciaga podcast about everything that's Mm -hmm. going on with them and Kim Kardashian. And and since then, even more has been coming out about them. But he sent me a little screenshot that shows the word Balenciaga separated into three different words like Bal, NC, Aga, translated into Latin. If you don't believe me, go on to Google Translate <laughs> and put in Balenciaga, and you'll see it translates into Bal the King, like B-A-A-L, the King. Mm-hmm. And if you'll remember, we talked about Baal as being that Canaanite deity that people sacrifice their firstborn children to. Yeah, that's just, I don't know. And it's one of those brands that's so heavily worded. It's so name heavy. Yes. So, for example, I own one sweater by them, and it is just like the name over and over and over are again. We, are we going to have a sweater burning party? We can. We should. We can. R.I.P. I only got to wear it, wear it once, and then they had to come out. and. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, you know, some people believe that words have power. You yes. know what I mean? Uh-huh. And so I think that it is fascinating to think about the fact that that word means ball the king and every time somebody is saying that name brand they're actually saying something else in latin mm-hmm. completely different yeah basically like you know yes raising up this canaanite deity that is known for sacrificing children and kind of like what we were just talking about balenciaga has been we should just call it bruno now like we don't talk about Bruno instead of keep saying the word over and over that's right that's what but, we should do. um the brand itself has been so heavily pushed out by like the Kardashians and it's be kind of become the, like the hit brand. It's the new Gucci. It's the new, and it's definitely like a new trending brand, but it is probably the most popular in the last couple of years. If you watch the new keeping up the Kardashians show, that's all you see is 
their bags, their shirts, and like I said, they're very name heavy. Because they get paid, they get paid yes. so much. But it's so pushed out that it has become a popular. I mean, I went and bought a sweater, and granted, I don't I'm glad like. She's most of their on because I'm so not into fashion. <laughs> I, I don't know like, nothing. It's not my particular style. I don't like the name heavy. It's just a very neutral sweater that it does have the wording, but almost anything you own from there is going to have in huge letters. Over and over and over again, repeated Balenciaga, Balenciaga. Oh, you stop saying it. Sorry, <laughs> you're gonna have to save the place. <laughs> it's crazy. Like yeah. that, literally blew my mind. I mean, it, it yeah. really, really did. Because every time you say it, you're saying mm -hmm. that, which is, you know. Yeah. I mean, Christian people, like, I, it's it's mind blowing. Yeah. You know, I mean, Christians believe not to put any other God above their God, you know, and every time you say that, it's almost like, yeah, you know, you're saying and that you're he, wearing it. Ball is the king. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's crazy. So it goes deeper. And, and I think it's very interesting. The Balenciaga has wiped all of their ads from all their social media, because what's happening is that people are going back to previous and campaigns apart. and mm -hmm. seeing more and more and more that are leading to this mm -hmm. this same repetitive, awful, uh, you know, type of advertising. The rhetoric. Yeah, yeah. So, I, whatever. I think it should be taken down big time. Yeah. And I'm not big on cancel culture, but I do feel like this is one brand that has kind of earned their what's coming to them. Well, and I'm not saying cancel, but I am saying, you know, the people, the big people like the Kardashians that mm -hmm. are all about it. I mean... They have taken way too long to come out and, and to take a stance it. against it. And honestly, I was watching a video about it this morning, and I believe it's 100% because they thought it was just going to blow over, mm -hmm. just like everything else does. And they didn't want to have to come out and take a stance because they get paid way too much money. Yeah. And they value greed mm -hmm. over yep. what's right. It wasn't actually when it first came out. It took days for any major celebrities to come out and speak about it. The only ones that I saw speaking out about it were B-list celebrities in the first couple of days. That's interesting. So. Yeah. And I've seen, you know, photographers, like real famous ad mm -hmm. photographers um, come out, you know, designers, all, all, all the, a lot of different people from different brands are all coming out saying, there's no way Balenciaga did not know oh, about this. Absolutely. There's no we've possible all, way. We've all seen the Devil Wears Prada. We know that you're sitting around a table picking apart every single aspect of those ad campaigns. That's right. So. That's right. Exactly. This one guy I watched this morning, he was on the news and he's like, when I was just going to be on uh, like Fox or something, mm -hmm. some guest spot, and he was wearing a blue shirt, he had 49 emails about a blue shirt. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. a blue shirt. He's like, so there's no way that these people were not, in, you know, interjected in every single part of this yeah. of this ad. Yeah. So with that being said, <laughs> let's move on to the Delphi murders. Yes. So we're going to talk today about the Delphi murders. They're also known as the Snapchat murders or the Down the Hill murders. So how much do you know about this case? So how long ago were these girls killed? It has been about five years. It was February of 2017. God, already. Mm -hmm. And they just now, How? when did they arrest this guy? This guy that was in we're October. Talk about? Okay, so this is very recent. The so end of October. I remember hearing about it when it came out. So mm -hmm. basically, you're going to have more details. But I remember there were two young girls walking along this really creepy looking railroad track bridge. Mm -hmm. Correct. And there was a dude behind them, mm -hmm. and they were on Snapchat. And they caught the dude behind him in video. And for uh, five years, they have had no idea who it was. Correct. Okay. So it was two best friends. They were in eighth grade. Abigail Williams, she was 13 years old, and Liberty German, she was 14 years old. Ugh. They were murdered in Delphi, Indiana. It's a small town with a population of just under 3,000 people. Um, I know that that sounds small, but to give you reference so I grew up in a town about this size and we had I want to say right around under 3,000 people graduating class like the average graduating class in my high school is about 35 people so it's small it's a tiny Very town small. so everybody knows yes, everybody everyone knows everyone so on Monday February the 13th the girls were out of school for a makeup day and I see a lot of people asking what that is but basically that's just where the school calendar they they take place and they put these makeup days throughout the year in case they need to use them for bad, bad weather, weather days. Yeah, mm -hmm. so if school is canceled for an yeah. ice storm, 
and they had to miss Correct. that day of school, they'll make it up on this and day. And I, I say that to note that the weather on the actual day was unusually warm. So they weren't out because the weather was bad because some pe there's a little bit of confusion with that sometimes. They were out hiking because the weather was unusually warm. So they were out on a popular hiking trail. They were dropped off around 1 p.m. and they were supposed to be picked up around 3 at 2.05 p.m., Libby posted a photo on the Mon and High Bridge on Snapchat. So this is why this case is sometimes referred to as the Snapchat murders. At 2.07, she posted a photo of Abby walking across the bridge. This was the last correspondence from either of them, and this is why this case is sometimes referred to as the Snapchat murders. Um, when pickup time arrived, the girls failed to show. So this didn't immediately throw up red flags, and some people talk about this as well. I don't think this is unusual at all. I think in my hometown, if I wasn't at pickup, it would just be kind of chalked up to kids being kids. Yeah. So around 5.30, the girls were reported missing because that was when their parents and everybody started to be They're getting like, worried. Wait a second. It was getting now dark. it's two hours later. Yes. They're not answering their phones. Correct. They can't answer. They're not answering texts. And I would imagine at the time the mindset wasn't necessarily something like what had happened happening. It was more so they're out hiking. What if they fell? They're injured animals. I would imagine things of that nature. How, how rural is this area? It's pretty rural. Okay. Yeah. So it's pretty hilly, rural. So law enforcement, um, around 530, they were reported missing. Law enforcement wasn't ready to panic just yet. And even when the sun started going down, they said there was no reason to suspect foul play or believe the girls were in immediate danger. Um, a lot of people give police flack for that. But once again, being from a small town like this, I just, I think that we would have moved in the same way. You just don't think something like what happened is going to happen when everyone knows everyone. Um, so despite the statement and police saying we don't think there's any foul play, a massive search was launched until it became too dark and dangerous to continue. The next morning on Valentine's Day, hundreds of people showed up to help search, and about half a mile up from the bridge in a wooded area, a volunteer stumbled across the bodies of two young girls. Mm. Their identities, identities were not released initially, but it's a small town, and so obviously everyone knew. Everyone knew the girls were missing, so mm -hmm. obviously it had to be done. In fact, and I think this is heartbreaking, and once again, it may be just because I grew up in a town like this, um, one of their grandparents was actually stated saying that they were searching near the road, and they saw the corners vehicle drive through by oh. so that was when so they, they knew. knew yeah so on the afternoon of february 15th so the following day um auto after autopsies were completed on both girls the state police and the carroll county sheriff's department held a news conference announcing the bodies had been identified as abigail williams and liberty german and the cause of death in both cases was ruled a homicide during the press conference an image of a white male with his hands in his pockets wearing a blue jacket jeans and a hat was released along with a composite of what police believed his face to look like but you can't really see his face in the photo um if you look up this photo you've probably seen it like we'll, i know we'll put it up on the yeah. on the podcast yeah the police said he was not a suspect he was only wanted for questioning to see if he saw anything they also released a soundbite of the man saying down the hill Now, so, hold on a second. So, mm -hmm. so they, they have this video of this guy. Correct. Right before they were killed. Yes. They were killed very close to where this video was taken. Correct. How are they saying he's not a suspect? Obviously he is. So He's a freaking man walking alone <laughs> behind these two girls right before they were killed. I don't know. Hell yeah, he's a suspect. I would imagine that they were hoping that maybe the man himself wouldn't come forward, but maybe somebody that knew him, like his wife would say, that's obviously my husband, not suspecting him, but would say, hey, you know, you may have seen something. Or Roger, I saw you walking on yes. that bridge. What the <laughs> hell were you doing out there with those girls? Yeah. So <laughs> and I, now they're dead. I mean, come mm -hmm. on. And one thing to note is um, he was in this kind of bulky wear. And it's one now, I think the weather was in the 50s. Now, to me, I would have been in bulky wear as well. But they're in Indiana. They're used to the cold. And everybody commented on how unusually warm it was, this was that day. This was October? February. February. February 13th. Okay, so growing up in northern Idaho where it's super cold all winter long, no joke, when it is 50 degrees, mm -hmm. we were running around in short sleeve shirts. Yes. Because yes. it was like, you know two mm -hmm. degrees <laughs> yes so 50 yeah. felt like summertime yeah so I, I mean so he was in this bulky jacket a hat you know yeah high, it was just a hat with like flaps right yes, correct 
So, so it kind of, you know, mm -hmm. covered up his face and you couldn't see his face. And from the, the photo. video that, well, police initially didn't release a video. They initially released a photo. And then about two days later, they released a sound bite, which just says really quickly down the hill. Um, so in that photo that they released, it wasn't actually from Snapchat. It was from Liberty German's phone. So she began recording and police had this video, but nobody else saw it. So it's not like the other pictures. They were released on Snapchat. Friends and family saw it. I'm so surprised that the killer didn't take their phones. Yeah. Could have been a, I mean, that's, just, that's a good that's point. That's surprising. So information quickly emerged, suggesting that the girls' murders weren't sneak attacks, and it was likely the girls realized they were in danger. They seemed to know they were being followed and suspected that they were in danger and had the presence of mind to capture evidence in case something happened to them, which God, is God, I wish they the would video. have called their parents. You know, if they're young, eight, eighth mm -hmm. grade girls, and they're worried because a creepy guy is following them, God, yeah. I wish they would have called their yeah. parents. Right I mean, then what a and horrifying there. situation to be in. Dad, you know? come and get us. There's a guy walking behind us, and he's mm -hmm. free. he's creepy. I think you just have to go back to that that small town mentality. Like, look at weird Joe. You know, weird yeah. Joe hanging out on the bridge, and I mean, especially at that age, they say that teenagers think they're invincible, and you know, they do. I mean, I remember being that age. Mm -hmm. We were stupid. Yeah. So. In, in my small town, we, I mean, there was there was never any danger because mm -hmm. murders and stuff like that just didn't, just didn't happen. Didn't happen. Yeah, especially in these smaller communities. Have there been any other murders like this in that area? No. Huh. Mm -mm. So um, the FBI joined the investigation uh, a few days after. So even with the photo, the sketch that was released, and then the sound bite, which said "down the hill." Um, nobody came forward. So to me, this is the most, and I think this is why this case gained so much notoriety and it spread across the world. This was not like the case we talked about the other day where I was shocked that it's not spreading. Everyone was talking about this case. And um, it's just shocking that in that small of a town with a photo of him and what he was wearing that nobody could say, oh, that's obviously, because also in those small towns, and I don't know about how y'all were, but it's like, my dad wears the same things. I know. Every week. My husband in the city wears the same I things know. every week. That's, I was talking to Shad about this last night. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, look at this photo. If this was you, I'd be like, what the frick were you doing yeah, on this bridge? Like, that's obviously Shad. That you is know, the and, coat I bought you from Costco. Yes. <laughs> so. God. Like, how, there's, I just don't believe his wife didn't recognize that, that I, photo. Yeah. I don't believe it. Because. You recognize the mm -hmm. way he walks, the way he carries himself, and the way he dresses. Correct. Yeah. And so his at this, voice. At this point in time, we didn't have uh, video. But still, you know. Well, they had the photo, though. Yes. So the FBI joined the investigation, but after two years, there were no arrests. Um, so even with all of that, nothing. But they did take him in. Well, are you going to get to that part? Yeah. Okay. He wasn't actually taken in by police. He was just interviewed right. as a witness. Right. Because he, um, was, he was there. Correct. So he admitted at the time to being there. I want to say it was like to a, a park ranger or something of the nature. Um, it wasn't an actual police officer. So, you know, police obviously hoped that someone in the community of less than 3,000 people would notice him, but nothing came out. So observers were further stunned when police released a new composite sketch that looked nothing like the original, saying that the case had shifted in a new direction and they were looking for a man between the ages of 18 and 40. So the second sketch that they released was a much younger, clean-shaven man. It was a representative of the face of the person captured in the video on Liberty German's cell phone as she walked on High Bridge. Police added to the confusion by announcing that the second sketch was made on February 17th, just a few days after the girls were murdered. Hmm. So a couple years after when the case, I think it was on the anniversary of the case, they re-release a new sketch and said that they've had this sketch the whole time. Just a couple days after, they've had it the whole time, but they didn't release it until two years later. 18 to 40 there's a vast difference Huge. in what a man looks like. Mm -hmm. A kid at 18 looks completely different than the way he would look at 40. Oh, 100 percent. So that's that's such a stupid. It's such yep. a stupid amount of. And they gave age no reason range. to the public for the change. So it's sketch number one, is a totally. It, it looks kind of what I would say similar to the person on the bridge, and then sketch number two comes out, and it is a totally different person. 
well, but they give no reason for it. They didn't say we think there's two people. You well, know, they they're still give... saying though that that they they don't believe they don't know that he was even acting alone Correct. at this point. Yeah. So maybe there is two. Maybe. And we yeah. have no idea. So on the surface, even though it looked like police had a lot, um, they really weren't giving out much. So a few things that people have notated is people around the area say the area is very difficult to reach. So it's led a lot of people to say and speculate that they think it's someone local. Someone had to be familiar with the area. Um, it's not like a tourist spot. Even You know how sometimes those small towns, like for example where I'm from, we have a bunch of rivers that go through. Yeah. So people kayak all the time. Yeah. So if something were to happen there, it's much more likely to lend way that it would be somebody from out of town. But then there's spots that only the locals know, and apparently this is a local spot. Yeah. So um, five years went by without an arrest. Um, and finally, on October 28th, Richard Matthew Allen, 50 years old, was arrested and charged with two counts of murder and the killings of Liberty and Abby. Um, the deaths of the girls were ruled homicides, but police never disclosed how they died or described what evidence was gathered. Uh, the case hit news once again, and he was arrested. And until Tuesday, November 29th, so Tuesday of this week, we had no idea why he was arrested. Um, Tuesday, police did release a redacted affidavit showing probable cause of why he was arrested. And I will note that police were very against. They fought, and the prosecutor fought to not have this released. And they only released a very small portion. The they probable cause? Page. The probable So... Shad and I are watching this other case that mm -hmm. we can talk about sometime uh -huh. called the Texas Killing Fields. Oh, I'm not familiar with that one. It's really, really interesting. But it's, this kind of reminds me of that in the sense that there was this suspect, mm -hmm. and, and the cop came on, and he was like, look, even if someone comes to us and says, 100%, I know that this guy did it, mm -hmm. we still can't just be like, okay, you did yep. it. We're arresting yeah. you. They have to follow yes. the, the evidence. Mm -hmm. And if... And if, the ev if they don't have enough evidence, you have to, be able to, you prove have, it. to have motive, probable cause, mm -hmm. and evidence. And, you know, uh, you have to be able to convince a jury. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And so maybe maybe they have been 100 percent knowing that this was the guy mm -hmm. this whole time, ever since they interviewed him in the beginning. But they they didn't have enough evidence for whatever reason until yeah. now. No, that's a good point. I don't know. So um, I went ahead and read the affidavit, and it does not indicate how Libby and Abby were killed, but it does confirm that they were killed on the north banks of Deer Creek. So that has been something that, um, and I can send you a map so we can attach it, but essentially there's the bridge, um, there's where the down the hill video is recorded, there's some items of clothing that were discovered at the bottom, and then kind of across the river is where their bodies were actually discovered. Across the, the river? Creek. Sorry, the creek. Was there a bridge going across the river? No. So they go down across a creek, and then that's where their bodies were found. It's a creek? So how wide is the creek? Um, Because when I hear river, I think like a It's not a river, a creek. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. a creek. All right. So um, Alan, back in 2017, told um, police that he had been on the trails east of Delphi between 1.30 and 3.30, which is when they're saying that the girls were murdered um, the day the girls were killed. He parked his 2016 Ford Focus in the parking lot of the old Farm Bureau building. Um, that was his wording, but police indicated that they believed that he meant the old CPS building, the Child Protection Services building, because there wasn't a Farm Bureau building anywhere in the vicinity. Um, that's, but that's sometimes weird. those old small towns will call something like we have a restaurant oh, yeah. that yeah. still I call it has been renamed six times, but still I call it what it was named six, six, yes, times six ago. owners ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so maybe it's a case of that. But police have indicated that um, they believe that he meant the old child protection services building. And I mentioned that because it becomes important later on. Okay. So um, teen witnesses in 2017 told police they passed a man on the trail the day the girls were killed. They described the male as creepy, described him as wearing blue jeans, a blue jacket, and his hair was maybe gray or a little brown. They couldn't really tell he was wearing a hat. So sounds exactly like the guy, guy on the bridge photo. Yeah, yeah. He was not very tall, no more than 5'10", and remembered seeing a car similar in description as a 2016 Ford Focus parked in the old CPS building. So this right here puts him time-wise there. 
Absolutely. So an adult female in 2017 advised she was on the trail and saw no other cars in the area parked. Um, she said she saw a male matching the one from the video on Mon and High Bridge, approximately 50 feet from her. Um, I, she had mentioned that he was standing, and if you look up photos of the bridge, there's almost like a little concrete lay to the right of the bridge, right by the hill. Mm -hmm. And this is where a lot of people speculate the girls were standing when they got the video of him. Because the video, people used to think that the girls were recording it behind him, but they were actually recording it face on. So like, I'm facing you, they were recording him walking towards them. Oh, so, so there were there were multiple people out there. Correct. At that time. Mm -hmm. So the adult female was approximately halfway between the bridge, so the Monon Bridge, and the parking area when she passed two girls walking to the bridge. So initially she passed a male, and then she so it's kind of like the girls met, which matches the description of the video that police have now given, which the public didn't know any of this. We didn't know about the three teenagers that saw him, and we didn't know about um, the adult female. So she advised she believed that these were the girls walking. Um, this was around 149. And she finished her walk and saw no other adults other than the male on the bridge. So mm -hmm. the only people that she saw were the th other three teenagers that both confirmed seeing him as well. And then the two girls. So really, they're the only people out there. Um, her vehicle is seen on the Hoosier Harvest Store video at 214, leaving the trails. And she advised when she was leaving, she notated a vehicle parked in an odd manner at the CPS building. So she gave this testament back in 2017. Um, and the Hoosier Harvest Store, it's only oh, important. Hold, hold, hold on. I think it said Hoosier. Hoosier? Yeah. How am I saying it? Hoosier. Hoosier. <laughs> I'm going to keep doing that. No, Hoosier. <laughs> Hoosier. No. What is it? Hoosier. Hoosier? Yeah. <laughs> is that why you look so close? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what is she saying? Pronunciation is not my strong that's suit. The that's the team. Wasn't there a movie? What team? Hoosiers. The Hoosiers. What do they do? What sport? Uh, like basketball, I think. <laughs> I mean, or, ba or football. I don't know. They Clearly not... There's some team named the Hoosiers. I mean, they're from Indiana. Okay, so I'm mean. probably going to mess it up again. Okay. I'm going to start calling it the Harvest Store. I'm going to lose, leave out Hoosier. <laughs> no, no, just call it Hoosier. It's all right. <laughs> uh, but basically, it's important to notate the video footage because it proves that she's not, you know, especially a case like this. I'm sure they received thousands and thousands of tips, and this is proof that she was where she said she was. Yeah. So she notated it not because it was odd for vehicles to be parked there, but because of the manner it was parked, backed in near the building. Um, another person came forward and reported this vehicle as well and stated it appeared as though it was backed in to conceal the license plate of the vehicle. So two people um, both drew diagrams. So police had them come in, dry, draw a diagram of where they saw the vehicle parked, and their diagrams matched in both location and the manner that they both and they don't have, notated the vehicle. They don't have front license plates there? Correct. Huh. So investigators spoke with another woman who stated she was traveling east on 300 north just before 4 p.m., who stated she observed a male walking west from the bridge, and he was wearing a blue color jacket, blue jeans, and appeared muddy and bloody. What? At the time, she, did she call the cops? Yes. She reported this back then. At the time, she thought... She, he must have gotten into a fight. Investigators were able to confirm on the Harvest Store camera that she did drive by when she said she did. Ugh. So through interviews, electronic data, store surveillance, and photographs, investigators determined that there were other people on the trail after 2.13, but no one else saw the girls or the adult male. If you saw a dude walking, bloody and mm -hmm. muddy... Would you stop and say, hey, bro, you need, you need some help? Are you okay? No, I don't help anyone. Why, why are you so bloody? <laughs> um, did, did you I get in a is... fight with a wild boar? What's going on? <laughs> I, she said that it looked like he'd been in a fight. Yeah, so what, was so, he bloody here? I, I mean, couldn't tell you. A fight, well, like, that would be like mm -hmm. punching in the yeah. face. I mean, if he's in a coat and jeans. Yes. Yeah. But if he has blood on his coat, that would be mm -hmm. very suspect. Yes. No, I agree. I'm, so, I'm curious about the location of the blood. Mm -hmm. It doesn't state. Ah! 
Uh, so reviewing prior tips, investigators reviewed a tip narrative from an office that interviewed Mr. Allen in 2017. So this is the park ranger that I was talking about. And in 2017, Mr. Allen admitted to parking at the building. He was at the trails between 1.30 and 3.30 watching a stock ticker on his phone as he walked. <laughs> So, um, what, what, what's he doing there? Like, isn't this in the middle of the work week? Yes. What's he yeah. doing there at, at two o'clock in the afternoon? Even that aside. Okay. I don't want to be judgmental, but why is you're telling me you're that into stocks, sir? He does not look like a stock. Are you a stockbroker? Wait, wait, how are you? How are you spelling stock? Is it S T A L K? <laughs> Cause that makes a lot of sense, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I don't know, you know, I haven't hiked in a long time, but it's kind of like if you're out hiking, and especially that bridge, if you look up photos of it, you kind of have to watch your step. So, because his excuse back then was, I didn't see the girls. I was so into the stock ticker on my phone. I mean, w what was he investing in that he was so worried about it going up or down that day? Crypto, I guess. I don't know. Well, <laughs> so. I, I hope he sold it all before it took a tank. <laughs> On October 13th, 2022, Richard Allen was interviewed again by investigators. He advised he was on the trails and saw juvenile girls walking, so he saw the three teen girls that saw they said they saw him as well. Oh, but he didn't see the two that actually freaking recorded him? Yeah. Well, that's weird. He further stated he went out to the bridge to watch the fish. Where? So in the changed. creek? Yes. In, in the creek? I guess. <laughs> can you see can you see the creek from the bridge? Uh, I'd have to look at pictures. I don't know off the top of my head. Hmm. So later in his statement, he said he walked out to the first platform of the bridge. So that's kind of that little oh, yeah. concrete mm -hmm. slab that I had said was to the side. Mm -hmm. And then he walked back, sat on a bench on the trail, and then just left. He told investigators he was wearing blue jeans and a blue or black Carhartt jacket with a hood. Hmm. And he may have been wearing some type of head covering as well. Suspiciously, just like the man in the video <laughs> and the man that was all bloody. Correct. He told investigators he owns firearms and they are at his home. His wife also spoke to investigators and she confirmed that he did have guns and knives at the residence. She also stated that he still owns a blue Carhartt jacket. They executed a search warrant for his residence in Delphi and located jackets, boots, knives, and firearms, including a Sig Sauer model P226 40 caliber pistol. Did she also say to the police, yeah, that's my husband in the video? I don't know. I mean, she knows she that has not blue come coat. out. <laughs> she has not come out. But all these years later, she comes out and says, yeah, he has a blue coat. Why not? Oh, that, was, na that was now? That was now. <laughs> She never spoke out back then that, that we're aware of. Well, maybe he was abusive. Maybe he threatened her. Maybe he... Maybe. I mean, who knows? You, you literally never know you what, don't. what these people are like behind closed doors. God, could you imagine mm. finding out your husband is going to jail for killing two young girls? Doesn't he have a daughter around the same he age? He does, yes. So they all know each other. Yep. Yep. So you know those girls probably know who he, he is. He lived close to one of the victims. Like a couple of miles away, which, like I said, in a town of 3,000, everybody lives close to everyone. But yeah, yeah. So an analysis was done on the six hour and determined that the unspent round located within two feet of one of the girl's bodies had been cycled through his six hour. Um, Richard Allen voluntarily came to the Indiana State Police on October 26 and stated he never allowed anyone to use or borrow the firearm. When asked about the unspent bullet, he had no explanation on why the bullet was found between the victim's bodies. Oh, that's, that's so he weird. He denied any involvement. So he says, I have the gun. I'm the only person that ever uses the gun. But magically, my bullet... Yeah. Was ejected he stated, out of my gun he also in between the girls. That he had never been at that where they were found. That he had never been in that specific area. <laughs> so the redacted statement also references the video evidence on Libby German's phone as the man approached the guy, the girls. One of the girls is notated saying "gun," and the man orders them down the hill. He says, "Guys, down the hill." The girls went down the hill, and then the video ended. Their bodies were found near where the video ended, and their clothes were later found in Deer Creek, south of where the bodies were found. So, Do you know who I feel bad for? Who? This guy's daughter. I feel bad for everyone. I mean, yeah. Except for whomever did it. Yeah. Of course, the parents of the, mm -hmm. of the girls, but the, 
I mean, to, to find out that your dad yeah. is arrested for killing probably your friends. And technically, you know, innocent until proven guilty, but... Right, right. But, ugh. The evidence? I, why did it take five years? Like, I, what, what was the change? You know, I mean, how much of this evidence just now magically came out? Or mm -hmm. did they already know all this and they just released it just now? I don't know, honestly. So throughout this entire case, it has always been said that police have done a good job at keeping things close to the vet, to the chest, so that they could convict when they were able to. Um, it's always been rumored that they knew who did it. Um, but then again, they've also at different times, like, for example, they ended up getting a um, search warrant on Ron. His name was Ron. I can't think of his last name. Um, but he was the owner of the land that they were found on. So they, if they knew all along, why was there a search warrant on him? And then we'll get to Keegan in a little bit, Keegan Klein, but there was a search warrant on him as well in reference to this case. So to me, if they always knew why these goose chases then, well, unless I there's multiple people involved. <clears throat> I think it comes down to reasonable doubt. Maybe. That's a good, that's a they, good point. You have to rule people out so that you can say unequivocally, this is the guy who did it. It's not these two guys. And here's why. Mm -hmm. you well, know? That's a good point. So you have to be able to say, because all you need is reasonable doubt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and just because we even talked about this, um, a lot of people are confused on how an unspent shell casing can be it's not a sh to a It's gun. not a shell casing. It's a full bullet. Okay. So an unspent bullet. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. So whenever it is ejected from a semiotic automatic pistol, the ejection process leaves marks on the shell that can be tied directly to a specific firearm. Right. So if I'm holding the gun this way, mm -hmm. right? And to, to pull it out, you pull this out like this, and, and it ejects the bullet. And so these little grabbers have to grab the bullet, and they leave marks on it. And it's kind of like a fin fingerprint. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, when, it, when the bullet shoots through, that also leaves a fingerprint, forensic evidence, on the bullet. But when you pull it back like that, it's kind of the same thing. It's yeah. a fingerprint that matches the gun. So the tool marks on the shell matched a pistol owned by Allen, mm -hmm. um, so, which according to the affidavit, which obviously had some redactions. Which probably isn't as specific as if you were to shoot the bullet through the gun. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Which he probably, I mean, and they haven't said how they were killed. Were, were, they, were they assaulted, sexually assaulted as they well? They haven't said anything. So I mean, they, one would assume, because there's obviously wild rumors, but it has been pretty confidently confirmed that the girls were found posed um the they prosecutor were, they were found what posed oh. nude and posed god why do they do that yeah and that there were three signatures left by the killer so what does that mean um a signature is basically where it's unnecessary for the killing so for example um if they tied a rib, you know, I'm not saying this is anything to do with it, but when somebody kills someone and, and leaves a ribbon, it's a signature. It's their oh. their fingerprint on. Right. Metaphorical like, like, fingerprint on the, the like crime. Like the Zodiac. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and the families have come out, and they really haven't spoken much other than they've said that um, we always knew that it could have been somebody living right amongst us, hiding in plain sight. It ha yeah, it has to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless it's the killer that, like, you know, kills up here and then doesn't want to get caught. And so yes. then yeah. he goes to another state. Yeah. But I think that this area is just so kind of like I was saying, where it happened, where it occurred, you it wasn't off the road. It was, you know, it's not like a trucker is driving by and sees two girls. It was on a hiking trail, but not a popular hiking trail by any means. It's so terrible. Mm -hmm. Ugh. And imagine in that small of a town, you know, the family that's left behind. Yeah. Just... I don't, I don't know. He worked at the local CVS and he actually um, printed all the photos for their funerals. What? Yeah. And the grandmother was notated saying when she picked him out, he was like, I'll do these for you free of charge. Oh, of course. Yeah. Which you can look at two ways. In a mourning community, you would do that. So if he's innocent, it's one of those things where he just did what your typical community member would do. Yeah. Or he, you know. I don't, I don't like this story. <laughs> yeah. It's horrible. So when, when do they think, I mean, do they have any idea when, you know, the trial's going to start? So or? he does not have, he initially stated that he wanted to use his own lawyer. Um, and then he just recently, I believe it was yesterday, sent a letter to the judge 
um, pleading for the judge to represent someone because he did not realize how expensive it was going to be. And that at this point, his wife is not able to work due to the publicity um, and that they're at risk of losing their house. Slash, and slash maybe she doesn't want to pay for the yeah. attorney. Yeah. Maybe. Well, I don't think they can afford it. Well, it's going to be hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, I looked it up, and typically they run about 200 to $400 for a criminal judge in Indiana per Jeez. hour. 200 to 400 So An hour, yeah. And and sometimes these cases take case like two big, years. Yeah. This big is going to be, you know. Hundreds of thousands. Huge. So yeah. he's asking for a public defender. Um, and that just occurred, and he has until the 17th to have rep legal representation. Um, and then afterwards, I would assume they haven't announced a date, but they have announced the judge because the initial judge that was going to preside over the case has excused himself. And um, I can't recall her name, but they did just replace the judge on the case. And they have petitions um, to remove it to have it done 100 miles outside of the town. So oh, they so did a search to see how okay. often his name was researched. Yeah. And the, where it kind of dropped down significantly was 100 miles away from Delphi. Wow. Just so that they don't he have has a, a fair sway, trial. Yeah, mm -hmm. sway jury. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So a little bit, um, just to go back to the Keegan Klein theory, just because for about a year, he was such a big hot topic when it came to this case. So Keegan Klein at the time, I believe he was 22 years old. He's a heavy set guy. He was using a Snapchat that he would post um, social on social media and he would end up, it was basically a really good looking guy from Alaska. He was stealing his photos and presenting them like it was him to catfish young girls and solicit, solicit them to send him nude photos, videos, things of that nature. Um, it isn't, hasn't been disclosed if he tried to meet them. I honestly think it was more so one of those cases where he was just trying to get trying the photos. Get, yeah. And then probably doing terrible things with them. Oh, Re yes. Reselling Absolutely. them or whatever. So, you know, he would act like he was this young, good-looking guy, and it has been highly um, notated, this hasn't been said by police, but that he was talking to um, one of the girls the day of the murder. So that really? right there at the time was a huge thing. And, in fact, it was enough that police were able to um, get a, um, whatchamacallit, warrant, a warrant to look through his house um, and for his phone. So once they found his phone, um, a timeline, which this once again happened really close to the time of the murders. Um, so February 13th, the girls were murdered. On the 14th, they were found. On February 23rd, when they researched his phone, he did a factory reset on his phone. Um, and then, because then he's like, "Oh crap!" Yes, those girls that I was catfishing on just February twenty fifth was when the search warrant was executed <laughs> on him and his father's home. And during the interview, he denied having any accounts, but later he admitted to them. It was estimated he was talking to around fifteen underage girls and was was receiving photos from them. And at this point in time, he is um, has twenty five counts going out against him of child pornography and solicitation from a child. But he's been ruled out from this case. They have never officially ruled anyone in or out. They have always left the door open. Um, and this is kind of why a lot of people think that maybe there was more than one person involved. Because police have always, including when they arrested um, Richard, they came out and said, we're not ruling anything out. We are still going to go down every alley that this case leads us. I could never be an investigator for stuff like this. That used to be my dream job. Five years? Mm -hmm. Or sometimes 10, 15 years for resolution? Yeah. That's like, stuff like this would keep me up at night because I'd be constantly, and I'm sure every single investigator is, but I'd be so worried about other people being killed by this person that's not mm -hmm. caught. Yeah. It's like the Idaho murders, you know? I mm -hmm. mean, God, people have got to be pretty freaked out in that town. I'm sure. And I'm sure even when you solve the case that it weighs on you. Yeah, because, you know, you, you just mm -hmm. don't you don't know unequivocally. That's yep. what that's what kills me is just not having the unequivocal knowledge. You know, what would probably be worse for me is having the knowledge, but not being able to prove it. Oh, so if that that is there is truth in the fact that they've had an idea this whole time who it was. Imagine having to see that person every day at CVS. 
Do you think they followed like followed him all the time? Do you think they had someone just on this guy? I honestly don't think that police knew who it was the whole time. I think if they did, they would have, but I really don't. But they haven't released why suddenly now they've arrested him. No, they have not. Well, see, that, that's why I so feel like... So one of the rumors, now this is a rumor and it's from a Reddit page, was that um, they received a tip from a neighbor that said he stole tools from another neighbor and somehow by chance they had to submit DNA. So that leads police to believe that, or people to believe that police have DNA evidence. But we don't even know that. The police haven't let us know. They really have played everything extremely close to the, the chest. Yeah, so we'll just continue to watch and see. And hopefully as the trial um, comes through, they have a lot more evidence. Because that's my biggest fear right now is that they don't have a lot of evidence. And, you know, he's going to he's gonna get away with it. So yeah. if it is him that did it, I hope that they have plenty of evidence. And we're going to learn why there's so many things that make us question the police. Because, you know, why were there different photos like that? And the police have come out and said there's a rhyme or a reason to everything. They won't tell us. They can't tell us. But we will one day know. And I hope that that day is soon and it's happening during this trial. Yeah, because, I mean, they hold evidence back so that when they interview him, mm -hmm. he can slip up and say, oh, well, that, that came out in the press. And yeah. the cops can be like, no, it yeah. didn't. As famous as this case has been, so as famous as this case has been in combination with as small of a town as it was, the fact that it was a volunteer that found the body, you know, so many different things. The fact that we still don't even know how the girls were murdered. They really have kept everything. Under wraps. Yes. So, I mean, kudos I wonder, to them on that. Do you think he helped with the search? I'm sure. I'm sure. They said there were hundreds of people there that almost everybody in town was searching. I mean, it's the same thing. I don't know. Like, for example, when we would go to state and football, you couldn't even get gas in our hometown because everyone was gone. Oh, well, we'll keep we'll keep our eye on this case and we'll we'll do updates as soon as we have some yep. some more really inform mm -hmm. information that goes along with it. But this is a this is a fascinating one. I'm glad that they finally made an arrest. And I, mm -hmm. I hope these families get some justice that they deserve for their their sweet girls. I certainly do as well, because it's just heartbreaking. Mm hmm. So thanks for joining us, and catch us next time. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you enjoyed this show, please like, share, and subscribe. It makes such a huge difference to our channel, and it helps push it out there to everybody else. And don't forget, we're on podcasts, too, on yeah. Spotify. Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, you, Google Music, like all the different places. So if you can't get in front of YouTube, totally fine. Check us out on the podcast and you can listen to us on the go. Just type in Pair of Spades somewhere. We'll pop up. That's right. Thanks. We'll see you next time.